Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of the Ramadan series Motivations. Um, today's motivation is for us to do something that sounds a little abstract. Um, hopefully, we can be motivated to keep Allah in the picture. And let, let me explain what that means. So, in Islam, we often talk about the concept of Tawheed oneness of Allah or monotheism but uh, a tawheed doesn't only mean uh, the, the awareness or the knowledge that there is only one creator it's not it's not a you know concept of a number only uh, rather it is also to believe that Allah is the only one in control Allah is the only one who decides how things should proceed in this in this world Allah is the only one uh, who whose will are 100% exactly uh, executed as he wishes. Allah is the only one who causes everything to happen and nothing that occurs is out of his will. So this, all of these are part of a tawheed. Um, so today's sharing inshallah uh, I will share one, uh, one ayah from the Quran and uh, a saying of a sahabi which would help us understand that um, everything that happens to us is by the will of Allah and what will that motivate us to do? That will motivate us to keep Allah in the picture. That will motivate us to keep ourselves calm. That will motivate us to direct all of our affairs to the you know, controller of all affairs, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ayah is from um, Surah Yunus, uh, uh, Surah number 10 in the Quran. Ayah number 107, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min rajim <coughs> The translation is as follows And if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except Him. Yani if Allah causes something that you, you think is bad to happen to you, no one can take that away except Allah. And if He intends for you good, then there is no repeller of His bounty. He causes it to reach whomever He was of His servants, and He is the forgiving, the merciful. So, um, basically Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, and to give you an example, if you fall ill, if a disease touches you, if you become sick, it is not bad luck. Uh, there is a you know physical reason yes you maybe you got in touch with some virus or you were infected by some infection that is the uh, direct reason but that is not the root reason that is not the fundamental reason the fundamental reason is Allah accepted and Allah permitted for this to happen to you and no one can take that away from uh, from you except when Allah wants it to be taken away from you so if Allah had, had willed that your disease can be removed then it will be removed but if Allah had not willed that your, your disease can be removed, maybe in a particular period of time, even if, even if you go to the best doctor in the world, even if you visit hundreds and thousands of doctors around the world, that disease will not go away. It cannot, you know, go beyond the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite is true. And subhanAllah, hear the language, look. Allah says, يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِطُورِ If Allah touches you with some adversity, so it actually happened to you, then no one can remove it except Allah. But then when it comes to goodness, Allah says, يُرِيدْ بِخَيْرٍ if, if Allah intends for you some goodness, He had just willed it. Maybe this goodness has not touched you yet. Maybe it hasn't come your way yet. But still, no one can prevent it from coming to you. SubhanAllah. If Allah just wants some good to happen to you, it will happen to you. No one can prevent it. يُصِبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِي So Allah causes the good and the bad from our perspective to happen to whomever he wants according to his wisdom and his infinite knowledge and he is to end this right we would think well that's just random Allah will just uh, make some people suffer and make some people lucky that's just random but then the end of this ayah says no that's not the case rahim, and he is always forgiving and always merciful so all of his decisions all of this you know design and control are based on his qualities his attributes of forgiving uh, forgiveness and his mercy so all of these are, you know, based in His mercy. Now, the Sahaba, they truly understand this concept that Allah is in control of everything. 
right? Whatever happens to me, another ayah in the Quran says, "Ma asaba a musibatin illa bi itnillah." Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi itnillah. Nothing strikes a person, no calamity strikes except by the permission of Allah, right? So because of this understanding, the Sahaba they were able to remain calm in all kinds of situations, and they used to, you know, uh, tell their children about this concept as well. For example, Ubad ibn Samit. Uh, عنه, he told his son, as is recorded um, by uh, Imam, Ibn, uh, Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan, he said that he, he, he told his son, um, Ya Bunayya, O oh my beloved son, Inna kalan tajida ta'ama haqiqat al-iman, hatta ta'lam anna ma asabaka lam yakun li uh, yukhti'aka, wa ma akhta'aka lam yakun li yusibak. He said, my son, my dear son, you will not be able to taste the reality of Iman, the reality of faith, until you understand that what happened to you were never meant to miss you. What occurred to you must occur to you, and there's no way that it can miss you. And what uh, missed you, there's no way it can reach you. It was not written for you. It will not happen to you. Right? And then he said that, to me, Rasulullah, that I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say uh, that, the first thing that was created was the pen, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write, and the pen asked, what shall I write? And uh, Allah commanded him to write the decree of everything till the last hour comes. So everything that happens around us has already been decreed by the will of Allah, and nothing happens beyond the will of Allah. So as a believer, when we understand that, we have the motivation to control our emotions. There's no such thing as good luck or bad luck anymore. There's no such thing as, oh, you know what, today is a bad day for me, or I've been... Uh, this is a bad time for me. No, it's Allah's time. It's Allah's you know, day and it's Allah's decree. So there's uh, no reason why we should feel uh, upset or, or uh, you know, angered or disappointed at the things that happen in our life because Allah permit, permitted things to happen and there must be a reason behind. Uh, and uh, Imam, uh, Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, he has a beautiful statement uh, regarding this as well. So people asked him, what's your secret for your piety? Where does your taqwa and your iman come from? He said, I understand four things. These four things keep me, you know, uh, always um, aware or conscious of the, the state that I should be in. And the first thing he mentioned is that I understand my risk has been written for me and no one can take it away from me, so I'm content. I don't feel greedy. I don't feel jealous of anyone else because my risk is my risk. No one can take it away from me. And whatever Allah has written for other people is not for me. I cannot fight for it, right? So this is also related uh, to today's sharing. So inshallah, this ayah and uh, this hadith from Ubaidah ibn Samit, uh, عنه, hopefully can uh, push us to be more content with our life and to always keep Allah in the picture. If something bad happened, of course you seek the worldly means to fix that problem. But don't forget, Allah is the ultimate one that fixed the problem. So if you have a disease, yes, go to a doctor, take medicine, but make dua as well. Because know that Allah is the one who actually removes your disease, not the medicine, not the doctor. Those are only means. Uh, and also when something good happens to you, don't think this is luck and don't think this is because of your knowledge or your ability or your special trait. Rather know that it is Allah who intended this good for you and be grateful to Him. So uh, let's always keep Allah in the picture and let's always remember Allah is in control. Thank you for watching. Jazakumullah khairan. See you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.